stop paying for N8N. Stop it, you're burning your money. All right, look, to be fair, if you're gonna pay anybody, the guys at N8N are pretty much like one team I'd suggest paying. Because it's one product that's worth its weight in gold. It's not really weighing anything, actually. It's worth its weight and time saved and money that it can make you for your team, for yourself as a solopreneur, as an entrepreneur, as a small agency, or for your clients. The team at NAN deserves the money. But what if you could run it for free in the cloud, self-hosted, the best way possible? Yeah! I'm talking about with Postgres SQL database and zero ongoing costs or very few depending on how you look at it. Today I'm gonna to show you the exact setup that's gonna make NAN's pricing team furious. What's up everybody, my name is Alex and today we're gonna to go through a setup for N8N cloud hosting for free, forever, or at the very least, very inexpensive, depending on what your use case is. Are you serious? But today I've got the perfect solution. I'll show you exactly how to self-host the NAN reliably on Render's free tier cloud service. I'll explain all the pros and cons, including some hidden limitations, and a small way to upgrade, all at just a fraction of the cost of NAN pricing. And look, full disclosure, there's lots of ways to run NAN cloud when you're self-hosting. Obviously, you can run it on Hostinger, we've tried that. Run it, try to run it in Cloudways, which we love as a platform. Run on DigitalOcean. There's a lot of options to run it self hosted. And whichever route you choose, they're all going to work the same in essence, but this is by far the easiest to set up and it's very scalable very affordably. Or post a comment with a question and I'll be happy to reply. We'll try to get as many comments as possible. All right, so like I said, I'm going to guide you through everything every step of the way. You don't need any coding experience. If you can copy and paste and have an email address, you're good to go. All right, let's dive into it. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is go to render.com. Search render. And we're gonna sign up for a brand new account. Now, if you do have a GitHub, I suggest strongly connecting it as it's gonna be useful for further things down the line. It's not gonna be necessary today, but uh, if we're building MCP servers, it's it's gonna be very, very useful for you to have a GitHub account if you don't already. All right, next thing you do is going to go to create a new web service. Use an existing image and to get the Docker image, let's go to Google. Okay, and we're gonna use this right here, the second link. And this is the official uh, Docker Hub end page for the self-hosted option. I'm gonna post this in the description as well as the N8N documentation. Very useful in case you're trying to do other things, but for now, we're just going to get this Copy it, simply. Come back to render and I'm not gonna use any credentials, connect. Name our web service. So in this case, we'll name it uh, our self-hosted N8N, okay? Choose the location that's closest to you, use Ohio. And if you're building out with other different uh, hardware or time over your, in your cloud, you can always try to stick with the same region that you're already at. So we'll stick with the one closest to us, Ohio. Now, here's what I'm about. You can select the free options or great for your average cloud experience. Just keep in mind though, when you use the free tier, it is gonna spin down. So uh, it'll, and when you go to connect, it's gonna have to spin back up. So there's gonna be a little de a delay or, or a lag. So if you do want 100% uninterrupted service, you want to go with the starter package at $7 a month. It's still a third of like the base tier of, of uh, N8N. And oh, by the way, you have unlimited runs of uh, workflows. There's no limit on that. It's literally as much as your server can handle or your database, whatever you're using. I can tell you from experience, we've run automations that um, on, on this just basic package that take place every seven seconds that are pretty complex. And we'll show you those in future videos. But literally $7 is gonna be able to cover a lot um, obviously, once you start expanding, you get multiple workflows, go to a standard package or pro, or if, once you have clients, like I said, you're gonna wanna have one of these higher tier packages. But literally, you can get away with the free one for now. Like I said, free. So we'll do the free one. Uh, we're gonna skip the environment variables for right now. Not gonna about anything else here. Um, this is all normal as it is. Deploy web services. And we wait while this deploys and installs NAN on the cloud. We'll try back in a second. There's still some things we need to set up, obviously, for it to get fully working. Let's go ahead and do that now. First, add a new database. So go to new, Postgres, and name your database, whatever you want. Okay, none of the other variables on this page are actually gonna matter other than make sure that you do have the same location as your any any n instance, which for us was Ohio, okay? Coming down to your, and as far as packages go, you can go with the free instance again. It's, uh, it's gonna work just fine for a few automations here and there. However, once you start doing more things at once, you're adding, updating, 
retrieving from database, you want to go ahead and upgrade, especially if you have multiple tables, you have multiple automations using the same database, then you're definitely gonna have to need to upgrade. But even if you were to take the basic cost of $6 a month for an upgraded starter package database and the $7 a month starter package and 88 instance, that's half the price of the cloud service. And I'm not sure what the cloud specs that N8M provides, but I think this is kind of comparable to it, uh, at least from what I've seen, at least on the basic entry level packages of the N8N uh, $23 a month plan. So, you know what, do what you will. Uh, the free one's great to try out. Like I said, this is completely free, so do the free. That's what we're gonna do today. Storage, you can also add additional storage if you need more than one gigabyte. Um, it's very inexpensive, All right? And then let's deploy the database. Let's create the database. And once it's created, we'll be able to go ahead and use some of the variables that it provides for us. And we'll go back to fill out the .env file and we'll be almost done. All right, it just took a minute here, but our database is up and running. As you can see here, it's available. Ohio East. What we're gonna do here is go ahead, scroll down, and we're gonna have some variables here, environmental variables that are gonna matter for the whole database to match up with the actual N8N instance on the server. So we're gonna copy a few things from here, okay? So go back to the N8N instance on the server, and we're gonna go to environment. We're gonna create some new environment variables. You can go to new variables and add each one of these one by one, or you can copy these from a .env file and paste them directly in there, whichever you want. If you go to the blog article that this is going to be linked below, you actually find all the generic ones that you need, as well as the links to anything that uh, might include. So let's go at our variables. All right, so you've got our variables already entered in here. Let's go ahead and go over some of these just so you know what we're doing. So these are going to apply to your server as well. So just go ahead and copy them exactly to tell you. This applies to the node underscore EMV, will be production. N8 and underscore port is going to be 5678. We got that from the Docker page right here. N8N underscore protocol is going to be HTTPS. Your N8N underscore host is going to be your host name, which is actually available right here, the very top of your page. Your N8N underscore log underscore level, that's going to be info. It's for debugging. Your N8N underscore encryption underscore key, that one is not going to be available, so you're going to have to create your own. You can do that by going to randomkeygen.com. Just scroll down to where it says 256 and generate a new random key. Take one of these, copy them paste it into your actual encryption key field over there. Next, we're gonna have uh, a long one, N8N underscore enforce underscore settings underscore file underscore permissions. That's gonna be false. N8N underscore runners underscore enabled. So if we're true for now, it might error out a little bit, but if you ever expand and scale up, you're gonna need that on. Next two are gonna be time zone related, one's for your server, one's for your instances. So generic, generic underscore time zone is for me, America forward slash new underscore New York. I see seen here and same for the TZ and you should be able to find the list of yours list of TZ times of database time zones. Yep. Here we go. Moving on. We have our database related instances. So first off, we're going to have the database URL and I'll show you how to get that from the database we just created. You're going to have our database related URL. Uh, that's going to be the first thing we enter. So let's go to our database information. All right. When you scroll down to the database connection section of it, we have everything you need right here. Okay. The only thing we're gonna make is a change to the external database URL. Show that, that's gonna be a little different. So we'll copy and paste it completely in here. But at the very end, I want you to add question mark SSL mode equals required. Otherwise you might have issues getting off the ground. For your database name, you should be able to find that right here. Mine is N8NDB underscore DB underscore YT. Just copy and paste that. Put your database name for your host. Also, this is available right here for the very top. And then your username and password are going to be available right here. Let's check the logs right now. Like I said, it might show a little error on the actual runners instance, but that's only because it's not fully set up. But in case we scale up, we want that turned on for us. All right, these variables are very important because if you don't put the variables in there, you're going to have connection issues. You're not going to get everything working right. All right, after those are all entered, all right, we have a few more variables to enter. And these are going to be very important because without these, you're not going to be able to send outgoing webhooks or incoming webhooks to your server, which is important if you want to communicate with your MCP or other apps. So in ours, will be our URL. So this will be your URL right there. Everything else, you can just copy and paste directly from the variables we'll provide in the blog article. When you're done, just hit save and deploy. If you go to logs, you'll see that the instance is starting up and should be working. 
and we can go to the URL and it should work. All right, so we have a chance to create a new account here. Go ahead and do that. All right, once you get your info filled out, you get into the NA instance, just complete this information. And one last thing, once you create the account, you log in there, you fill the information out, you'll have the option to get all full lifetime features of NA10, just gotta give them your email and they'll send you a license key over. All right, once you get your license key, you can go ahead and go to the settings and enter activation key, enter your license key. Okay, and we've activated our license. You can now go ahead and install community nodes on here, something you can't do on the actual cloud version if you were on a official cloud plan. You just go to settings, community, install community nodes. Remember, check out the article in the description for all the environment variables that you need, as well as any links that we used here in this video. Try to keep it fast, try to keep it short. This actually is a really good method. This is a good way to get a very valuable software that you can make a lot of money with. Who knows, it may change in a few few months and it may be out, something else may be the new hot software, uh, depending, MCP servers are revolving, it just kind of came in the market. But for right now, this is the most powerful automation software that we have at our disposal. We can use Zapier's way too cookie cutter, in my opinion, I'm not gonna lie, I like Zapier, it's a lot, a lot of integrations. And hey, if you gotta use Zapier, we still use Zapier too. Uh, it's not like it's out completely. It's just that for us, a lot of the workflows we build are in n 8 and they work a lot better. And like I said, if you need to use Zapier or Make or whatever other software, you can just connect it with an N if you need to. So that's what the options with webhooks are. If you found some freaking value in this video, make sure you hit the like button below. And if you wanna see more shit like this, subscribe. We're posting a lot of videos and hopefully getting some value to you. We're testing so many things out and these are gonna be really valuable for you. Some of these are gonna be kind of crazy. <laughs>